let's explore a quick and dirty way to create super contrasty black and white images. The best way to convert a color image to black and white is using the channel mixer. We can use the adjustment button in the layers panel to add the channel mixer adjustment to our document. To convert the image to black and white, we just need to change the output channel to gray. This will create the best balanced black and white image. To make the black and white image interesting, we can add contrast to it by adjusting the intensity and the alpha sliders. Usually, a slight increase in intensity and a slight decrease in the alpha will create a more contrasty black and white image. This looks pretty cool, but here is a quick hack I want to share with you to get a more powerful contrast. Let's remove the current channel mixer first and make a duplicate of our image layer. With the duplicate selected, go to the filters menu and from the color selection, choose Erase White Paper. If you use an image layer, you probably will get a message from the assistant that the image layer has been rasterized to a pixel layer. Keep in mind that this filter is destructive and that is the reason why we created a duplicate first. By applying this filter, the white values in the image have become transparent. We can now add a fill layer below it and set the fill color of the fill layer to white. This will bring back our original image. To convert the image to black and white, I can now add another fill layer, but this time I'll make sure it's black and move this fill layer inside the semi-transparent image we created, effectively clipping the black fill so that the semi-transparent image is filled with black. And have a look at that. That looks awesome. Look at the eyes and the shades. Let's do a quick compare with the channel mixer method. I'll quickly group these two layers and add the channel mixer we applied earlier. I think you can clearly see the difference. The erase method creates an amazing contrast look with a lot of highlights coming through. Keep in mind that this quick hack method will not work well with all images. For example, let's take this image. I'll repeat the same steps as before. Make a duplicate, apply the erase white paper filter on the duplicate, add a black and white fill layer and finally move the black fill layer as a child to the semi-transparent image. As you can see, this didn't work very well. The original image did not have a lot of whites resulting in a very dark image. But we can fix this and still get the strong contrast we want. I will duplicate the semi-transparent image with the black fill layer and then remove the black fill from it, leaving us with the original semi-transparent image. We're going to use this to brighten up the image by setting the blend mode to screen. This will, however, introduce color, but by adding a channel mixer with the gray output channel, the image will become black and white again. Now it's time to do a little bit of fine tuning. Let's check the image without the layer in screen blend mode, which as we know was too dark. When we re-enable the layer in screen blend mode, we get a better image, but it does not have the contrast we're looking for. When we adjust the opacity of the layer in screen blend mode, we can fine tune the brightness it's adding. And there we go, pretty awesome. By the way, we can utilize this method for other purposes, for example, the Sophia effect. I'll quickly repeat the same steps, where I apply the erase white paper on the duplicate, add the fill layers, and on top, a copy of the semi-transparent layer in screen blend mode. To get the Sophia effect, we can change the color of the white fill to a very light yellow brownish color. For the black fill, we can use a dark brown color. I'll group the layers and also we'll make sure that the top layer in screen blend mode is in black and white by adding a channel mixer using the gray output channel. This will make sure we have no colors bleeding in. By fine tuning the fill layers, we get a cool looking Sephia look. Another different use case is for adding more color and contrast to an image. To achieve that, I'll make a duplicate and apply the erase white paper effect. 
Next, we'll add a fill layer and move it inside the layer we just erased the whites from. But this time, instead of using black for this layer, I'll use a color close to gray, like this brownish color. We do have the original image below, so when I change the blend mode of this layer to linear light, we get this super colored image. From the quick effect panel, I can change the fill percentage of the linear light. A fill of around 20% will work quite well. Have a look at the before and the after. That is pretty cool. You can play with the color of the fill to get interesting looks. For example, a green tint will give the image a completely different feel. I'll keep it at red as I'm going for a warmer look, which makes this image super cozy. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the buttons below if you like this video. See you in the next one.